This is what low and slow is all about, taking cheap cuts of meat and making them incredibly tasty and moist. Smot, but true. Roast beef this good should be illegal. Mm. I'm Shuey and in this video I'm going to show you how to smoke oyster blade roast. It is one cheap cut of meat, but done right it is one tasty piece of beef. So just sit back, grab a drink or two and let's get into it. As always I dropped in to see my local butcher Mick and I said hey mate hang on I'm not here for cuddles today. I need a tasty cheap cut of beef. Oyster blade is what he suggested and I walked out with this 1.5 kilo soon to be tasty piece of beef. No prep needed, Mick trimmed off all the outer silver skin for me. Now I did ask him to leave some of the fat on it to help protect that during the cook. Trimming off the fat or leaving some on is a personal preference. Tell you what, you do you and I'll do me. Do you know what I mean? For the seasoning, I think we need to let this beef flavour shine. So I'm keeping it simple today with a standard SPG or salt, pepper, garlic rub. Sergeant seasoning on board for action. Enemy acquired, preparing to salt. <laughs> Enemy advancing, reloading with pepper. <laughs> they just won't stop, finishing off with garlic. Now we're just gonna pop this aside and allow it to come up to room temp while we get our barbecue ready. For those that wanna know, my SPG mix is 20% salt, 60% pepper, and 20% garlic. For those wondering, why do we allow our meat to come up to room temp? Because it allows it to cook a lot more evenly. If you put a large chunk of cold meat into a barbecue or smoker, the outer bits are gonna cook a lot quicker than the internal part. Now it's not hugely important when doing low and slow cooks, but it's a great practice to get into. Plus, it means more beer time as while well we wait. Today, I'm gonna to be using the 57 centimeter Weber kettle and I'm gonna be utilizing the snake method because I wanna be smoking at temps of 150 degrees Celsius. And how I'll do this is by carefully stacking briquettes in the Weber to create a snake. Now you wanna take your time and make this as neat as possible. Then I'll add 14 briquettes to a chimney starter and light them up. Once they're all ashed over, I'll add them to one side of the snake. I'm gonna add some red wine oak and some cherry wood for some smoky flavor. Don't forget to hit like, comment on the video, subscribe to the channel and smash that bell button for notifications. One starting on the lit fuel and the other pieces spread around the snake with a 50 mil gap in between each piece. Don't forget to add a drip pan. I'll carefully put the grill back in place. Adding an ambient temp probe to track our temp. I'll pop the lid back on, opening all the vents, and I'm gonna make sure that lid vent is on the opposite side of our lit fuel. I'll keep an eye on our target temp, and before we reach it, about 30 to 50 degrees off, I'm gonna start closing down that bowl vent so we don't overshoot it. Did you know that Weber don't sponsor me yet? They apparently need you to share and tag them in my videos. Once the Weber's at temp, we can pop the oyster blade on the grill, on the opposite side of that lit fuel. Adding an internal meat probe, and we're gonna let that ride until it hits 70 degrees Celsius internally. But not before we give it a spritz of my special secret spritzing formula. That being made up of three equal parts of one part water to one part water to one part water. Pop the lid back on and we're gonna leave that alone. Did you know moist meat attracts more smoke? Smut! Today I'm cooking with a medium to high indirect heat of 150 degrees Celsius. And all up, this cook's gonna take around five and a half hours to be ready for a rest in an esky. Or for those of you who like to follow my beer timer, you're looking at an 11 beer cook. Cheers. Now, if you include the rest time while we hold the meat in an esky, you can include four more beers. We are three hours into the cook and the slab of meat, or as we've got to know it, the oyster blade roast, has finally hit an internal temp of 70 degrees Celsius. So we can pull it out and put it on two pieces of foil. We're just gonna curve up the ends and we're gonna add a good splash of warmed up beef stock. And we wanna wrap this up nice and tight, just like if you were in jail and you had a cellmate called Bubba who wanted to have non-consensual cuddles all night. Pop this back on the grill, adjust the position of the grill so the meat is on the opposite side of the lit fuel. Insert the internal temp probe again and pop the lid back on. We can now wait until the internal temp reaches 90 degrees Celsius before we check on it again. The internal temp has finally reached 90 degrees Celsius. So we can just get it out. We're gonna test how probe tender this is with a skewer. Remembering we aren't after pulled beef, it doesn't have to be super soft. I do still want to slice this, but 
I'm looking for an even softness all over. And once you feel the roast is probing soft and easily all over, grab an esky, pop in an old towel, put the oyster blade roast in, add another old towel, slap the lid on, and we're gonna let that sit and rest in its own juices for a couple of hours. It's actually called holding the temp. You're probably more used to hearing the term resting your meat, which means a small amount of time for smaller pieces of meat. Holding the temp is for bigger pieces for a longer time. The time has come to unwrap the meaty goodness from its tomb of towels and foil. Look at that great color. And the smell is phenomenal. All we need to do to serve it is slice it across the grain. Did you know the oyster blade is used to make flat iron steaks or poor man steak? You do now. If the side of that doesn't get you salivating, nothing will.